Uh, good evening, my students, and welcome to another session of our study on computer literacy and information technology. We have already did a lot of things with respect to introduction to computing. We have done internet, and uh, now I want us to look into another important aspect of our course outline. That is an application software. And specifically, as I already indicated in my previous slides or my previous lectures, uh, an application software, they are normally designed for a specific purpose. So with respect to your course, computer literacy and information technology, we are going to consider one of the most popular application software in computing. That is Microsoft Office, the package. So the course, with respect to the course, we are supposed to treat Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. So I want us to start today using or learning Microsoft Word. Uh, as I've already indicated in my previous lectures, I told you that whatever I'm teaching, I'll start from the level zero, that is the basic. So um, as usual, I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can appreciate whatever we'll be doing. Okay, as you can see, this is my desktop. This is my computer desktop. You can see a lot of uh, icons on it. Because I'm going to deal with Microsoft Word, the most important thing is make sure you have Microsoft package, the Microsoft Office package on your machine. And once you have the Microsoft Office package on your machine, you automatically have the Word, the PowerPoint, or the presentation, and also the Excel. Because today we are going to talk about Microsoft Word. The first thing that you have to do is you have to look for the application, Microsoft Word. To open or to launch the application, you have to go to, through these steps. For example, if you have the, uh, the icon, on your desktop, like in my case, I have, this is my Microsoft Word. It is in the form of a shortcut. And whenever you see any application on your computer desktop with, a, with an arrow like this, we call it a shortcut. You can see one for Microsoft Word 2016. You can see one for, one for Zoom, one for this uh, application, Castor, one for the internet downloader. So any application, even a document, when you see it with this small arrow, or there's an arrow attached to it, then it is a shortcut to the program. But if you, can, if you don't have the shortcut, you can open or launch the application by going through these steps. You locate the start button on your start menu, uh, on your taskbar, this is my taskbar, where I'm dragging uh, the mouse, this is the taskbar. And on the taskbar, you can see a lot of things. Uh, you can see a lot of things. Uh, here where you find your uh, internet connection or the wireless where you see the charger this thing they are all on the taskbar so i'm looking for the start button so i'll click this is my start button when you click on the start button the start menu will pop up so i'm going to click on the start button yes so this is the start menu i have to locate microsoft word so because it is not here but one thing that you must bear in mind is most of the times, the most frequently used applications on your computer, anytime you launch or anytime you, you click on the start button, you see them on the start menu. For example, Microsoft Word is here. It's one of the most frequently used on my computer, so I can easily face it. But for example, if you don't have it here, you can go through the process. You can drag your mouse and look for it. So it, it is a package inside Microsoft Word. So I'm going to locate it, it's in Microsoft. So this is my Microsoft Office 2016 tools. So when I click on it to open, then I will locate my Microsoft Word. So you have to locate your Microsoft Word from it. But because I already have it on my desktop or, or as one of the most frequently applications on my computer, I'll click on it. Once I click on it once, it will open. So as you can see on your screen, it is now launching or open. When you click on it like this, the system will give you an option whether to use to, to, to choose a blank document or continue on or as a tool. These are they are also templates on Microsoft Word. 
You can use it to generate a calendar, blah, 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 and the rest. So these are all templates that you can use. But because we want to use it for academic purpose, you can even use it to, to prepare like party invitation card if you want a template. These are all things that you can see, but I want a blank space or a blank document. So I'll click on the blank document. So this is my Microsoft uh, Word screen or Microsoft Word program window. Another way that you can also open it is uh, you can also launch or open the application is also, for example, once I have an application or a Microsoft Word document, or in my case, I also have the shortcut here. So I can double click. When you double click, it will open. Or I can right click on it, then choose open, and it will still open. Or I can select or click once on it, then press the enter key on my keyboard, it is still open. So I've taken you through the various steps that you can use to open your Microsoft Word application. You can use the same process to also launch any application. So when we when you also when you also want to launch a Excel application, um, PowerPoint application, you can go through the same steps to launch the application. In fact, most of the applications that you have on your computer, you can open them or you can launch them using these steps that I have just demonstrated for you. Now let's look. Now I have my desktop. Oh, um, I have my Microsoft Word. Anytime you open the Microsoft Word. You see what you call the title bar. The title bar. The title bar is basically where you see the title of the document. So, for example, if you save a document with uh, by name maybe uh, assignment one, you see the assignment one on the title bar. Where you see the name assignment one, that will be the title bar. But in my case, we automatically anytime you open an application, Microsoft Word by default, by default, will give it a name. So for example, it will give, in my case, it is giving me a title document one. But as soon as I finish typing or save it with a name, the name will now change, the document one will now change to the preferred name that me or you have, you have chosen. So for example, if I want to give this document a name, uh, if I want to give this document name or I want to save it, you can only give it a name by saving it. And if you want to save it, you go to on the menu. So from the title bar, we also have what we call the menu bar. This is the title bar with the title on it. And this is also the menu bar where you see the various uh, 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 types of menu. We have the far, the home, the insert, the design, the layout, the references, the mailings, the review, the overview, the view. On under each menu, there are various things that you can do. For example, this is the far. When you click on the far, this is where you get the option to save the document or you can even open a new document, you can save or save us. As we move along, I would, we will discuss the different, or I will tell you the difference between save and save us. If you want to print a document, you can go, you can have it here. If you want to share it, if you want to export it, close it, and account and other options. When you also click on the home, this is where you get the, the various formatting toolbars. And we will talk about the formatting when you want to format a Microsoft Word, a, 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 a document in Microsoft Word. We also have the insert. When you click on the insert, this is where you can see like something like a table. If you want to insert a picture, if you want to insert a chart, and others. This is where we also have the design, where you get the various types of uh, uh, the various ways of designing your document. We also have the layout, where you get like margins, orientation, the size, the columns. Where you you you'll be talking a lot about column break, the uh, the uh, the line numbers and the rest. You also have the references where you, you can use, for example, if you are preparing a publication, if you are preparing academic work, you need to do some references. This is where you can also do the references. So for example, in my machine, I've been using one of the most powerful referencing tool that you we use to uh, do referencing. That is the uh, insert, uh, my Mendeley. So you can also find them here. We also have the mailings and the rest. So these are all, Examples, uh, or these are example, uh, all uh, uh, menus that you can find on the menu bar. So for our purpose, I want you to appreciate how you can save a document with a name. So to save a document with a name, you go to the file on the menu bar. So this is file, I'll click on the file. This one, this one will pop up. Because I want to save it, I'll click on save. Once you click on save, the system will give you the option to 
select where you want to save the document, where you want to keep the document. For example, I want to save it on my desktop. You can save it on your uh, pen drive. So you have, you have to locate it. Uh, so these are all, so you can save it or, or in a folder on your desktop or in a folder on your pen drive or even on your hard drive or in my document. So depending on the location you want to save it, you have to select. So in my case, I want to say, save it on my desktop. So I'll click on desktop. Once I click on desktop, the system will show me all the folders on the desktop. If I want to just save it on the desktop without putting it on the folder, this is the process that I'll go through. I'll just type the name that I want to give it. Or if I want to create a folder on the desktop and keep it in, I'll do that. Or I can also save it on an existing folder on my desktop. For example, I can save it on a folder called CV. This is a, a, a folder that I normally save my CV, uh, the, my various CVs inside. So maybe if I want to save the document inside the CV, I will, I will save it. But for the purpose of organizing your files in a good way, as a student, I would suggest that you create a folder for each course that you are doing. So for example, I know I will be giving you a lot of assignments. In this case, create a folder called Unit 103 on your desktop so that any assignment relating to Unit 103, you put those documents inside so that at the end of the semester, if you're going to prepare for exam, when you open the folder called Unit 103, you know that all the assignments, all the works, any material on Unit 103 is in that folder. So in my case, I will suggest that you create a folder called Unit 103. So this is the folder icon. Once we click on the folder icon, it will give you the option to create a folder. I also give the folder a name, so I'll click on it once. So this is the folder. So it's giving me the option to type. So I'll type the name of the folder. I'll give it a name. So I said Unit 103, so Unit, uh, Unit 103. So I've created a folder for once we finish, you press enter on the keyboard. So I have Unit you know, 103. I already have one on my machine already. As you can see, I organize, even me as a lecturer, I organize my documents according to the courses that I teach. For example, I know I'm teaching Unit you know, 103. So I already have Unit you know, 103 on my desktop. Okay, so this is the Unit you know, 103. Then I want to give this document a name, maybe assignment one. Or you want to give it a name by maybe any name, so assignment. Assignment one. I have finished typing. You have to save, because I'm dealing with Word, automatically to give you the option to save as type. You can even save it as a PDF. I will take you to how you can convert your document or how you can save your document as a PDF from Word or from PowerPoint or from Excel. But because it's a Word, by default, it will give you the Word. So you click on Save. It means that, so as you can see, the title bar has changed. The title on the title bar has changed from document one to now assignment one. So I have now given it a name, assignment one. So this is your first assignment. I'm now going to type something. Today I want us to look at how you can type something on Microsoft Word and also edit it, uh, or, or, or sorry, format, edit and also format it. So as you can see, this is what we call the formatting tools. These are our formatting tools. <clears throat> we have the bold, the italic, the underline, the various font, the font size, the, the, subs the subscript and also the superscript. There are various types of formatting tools that you can use under formatting toolbar. So for example, I'm going to type something then we will, I will take you to how you can change the how you can format it. You know, in computing, we have to, the format, we have format and formatting. You can use, if someone say, I want to go, I want to format my pen drive, or I want to format my, any of my storage device. It means that you want to get rid of your content. You want to get rid of the content. But in Microsoft Word or in, in, in Word and also, as we also use the term formatting, or we format meaning changing the appearance of your test, and making it to look nice, maybe uh, changing the size from maybe two, from 11 to 12, changing the color from green to red. This is what we call formatting. So I'm going to type something like, my name is Peter Apiahene. I have typed Peter Apiahene. My name is Peter Apiahene. This is a, a sentence, my name is Peter Apiahene. And as you can see, automatically, when I come to the font, 
the computer is telling me that the font that I have used or that I'm working on is Calibri. And the size is 11. As you can see, this is the size 11. This is the font uh, Calibri. The font name is Calibri. If I want to change the font, I have to select. Anytime I want to format any document, the first most important thing that you must do is to select the document or you highlight it. So I want to do that. And you can highlight or select it, uh, select it by dragging your mouse over it. Once you uh, left click and uh, uh, you right click, you right click and drag it. Once you drag your mouse over it, you are, I mean, uh, selecting it. You are selecting it. So I, I will just uh, left click. Uh, I will just left click. Oh, sorry, I will right click on it. I will right click and I will, I will press and hold the mouse in, 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 in uh, according to my leg, it will be the left. Uh, when you put the mouse like this, you, according to your leg or your your hand, it will be the mouse pad or the mouse uh, click on your left. So I'll left click it and drag on it. So I've selected it. Now I want to change the font to a different font. So when I go here, you see the small. There is always a small arrow. There is a small arrow attached to the the font need. So as you can see, even if any time I put the mouse on the uh, on the font, this uh, on the uh, font, you see the name will come. So I'll just click on it. It will give him the option to select any of the font that I want. And as I drag the mouse over the font name, you see that the system is changing. You see, for example, this one, I've changed it to the Algerian font. What I have just done is what we call formatting. I've changed, for example, I've changed the form for the font name or the font from the Calibri to uh, Algerian. But in, 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 for academic purpose, any official document should always be in Times New Roman. Any official document that you prepare should always be in Times New Roman. And the font size should also, should also be 12. So uh, I will look at this Times New Roman. I will select it so you see this, the Times New Roman. And the font size 12, this is 11. I will, when I click on the, left, the small arrow on the 11, it will give me the option to choose any of the font. So this is 12. As the font size increases, the, 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 the size of also your document also, or what the, your test also increases. For example, we see this is nine, this is 10, this is 11, this is 12, 14, 16. So I'm increasing it. So I want to choose the font 13, uh, 36. So this is the font as you can see. So when you open the document automatically, you see that the font is Times New Roman. And now the font size is 36. As compared to the previous, it was Calibri, and the font size was 11. Now I want to change the font. I want to bold my name. I want to bold my name, Peter Pianhene. And to bold it, I will just select. I have to select whatever I want to bold. I will select it and go here. This is the bold. If I click on the bold, it will bold it. Have you seen it? Let me redo it again. I will select it. I will say I want to bold appear here. So I'll select appear here, Peter appear here. Then come here, bold. I'll click on so I've bold it. I can also underline it by using this. This is the underline button. Underline the text, Peter appear here. I'll click on it. It has underlined it. You can italic it. Huh? When you click on the eye, it means you have italic it. Let me do it again. You see that this one is non italic. But once I click on the, the eye, that is the italic, if you see it. Please, as we move along, anytime you use any button or you use any formatting toolbar, take note of the control, uh, I mean, the shortcut. It's very, very important. For example, when I put my mouse on the board, you see that the shortcut for control, uh, for board is control B. The shortcut for italic is control I. The shortcut for underline is control U, control plus U. As you press the control, you press and hold the control key on your keyboard and you press U, it will, it will still be working for you. So this is Peter Pia Hene. And I have bold it, I have italic it, and what have you. I also want to change the font color. So this is the font color. The font color by default is black. And please, 
for academic purpose, any official document should have black as the font color, a black by as the font color. That is why Microsoft Word is even giving you a default color, the default color black. So the font color is the default for a Microsoft Word font color is black. But for assignment, always use any official term, you have to use the font color black, please. So I, I want to change the font color, uh, Peter, to the font color black to maybe green. Me, green is my favorite color. So this is green. So have you seen that the font color has now changed from black to green? All this thing that I'm doing to the test that I initially typed, my name is Peter, is what you call formatting. I'm changing the appearance of the test. I'm changing the appearance of the test. I can do a lot of, of, for this. But for the purpose of our lectures today, I want you to start typing something and be playing around the bold, the italic and the line, changing the font size, the font color, changing the font size and the font color, the font. We also have the subscript and also the superscript. I know some of you are chemistry students, or I know a lot of you uh, from, your, uh, from your background, sometimes you type something like in, in chemistry we have uh, the, the chemical formula or the, the formula for chemistry. The chemical symbol is N capital A small A. And maybe uh, the, uh, the atomic number is 11. Is it 11? Yes. And the mass number is 23. So when I type the 11, I, I want to make it a subscript. I will select the 11 and click on the subscript. The subscript is the X small. When I click on it, you see that the 11 has come down. This is what you call the subscript. Let me redo it again. If I want to make it superscript, I'll use the S squared. Click on it, see that it's going up. So you can also play around the subscript and the superscript. You can also play around the subscript and also the superscript. You can also change the test area. You can see that by default, the test area for Microsoft Word is white. That's the background is white. And also, for academic purpose, also make sure that your text area is always white. I can change the text area of, for maybe the name, for name, and make it maybe yellow. So I'll go here, this is the text area. I'll select it and make it yellow. You see that now the text area is now yellow. I can make it blue, any color that I want. Green, black, black is not good because the font color is already black. So let me choose this green. So this is also the test area. You can also have use what you call the change case, the change case, the change case. For example, I've typed the name appearing. I want the, I want name N A M E to be capital letters. If you don't know it, you delete it and retype it. Please, once you have typed it, you can also edit it or format it and make it capital letters. That is all caps. So I will select it as usual and go here. There is the change case. You see there is a capital A, small a. When I click on the small arrow attached it, you see make it uppercase. When I click on the uppercase, it will make it capital letters or the uppercase. I can go back and make it lowercase. You can make it sentence case. You can also try your hands on some of these things. We also have another important one called decrease font size. You can change the font size from small to uh, big without using the the font size numbers here. So for example, I can select it up here and be increasing the font size from this. So this one is decreasing. I can be, dec once I click on it, you see that it's, it's decreasing. When I want to increase on it, I'll come here, this increasing. So I'm increasing it. I'm increasing it. Uh -huh. So that is that. So today, let us concentrate on here. So today we have done a lot of things using this particular formatting tool. In our next video, we will look at uh, some of the formatting tools here. Uh, some of the where you can do, where you can do numbering or bulletin and the rest. You look at it here from here. Then we move on to the another menu that is insert, how you can insert picture, how you can insert tables in a document, how you can design and change the layout and other things. Thank you and make sure you practice this one at the comfort of your home. Watch the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Peter Apia Hene, and thank you for watching. Share the videos. Those who don't have those who can afford to buy the internet and download it, please share the video with your colleagues. Those who
cannot download it, share with share it with them and let them also watch it and follow it. If you have any question when we meet next time in class, you draw my attention to it, then we discuss. Thank you for watching my video. May God bless you.